It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with the chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious February weekend? Well, things are great, Ryan. Thanks for asking. And um, I know you're doing well. I saw you a number of times on Fox Business this week. And like your old Villanova track coach used to say, I bet you can't wait till tomorrow because you get better looking every day. I mean, Bob, you only speak the truth. <laughs> I wish that were true. I wish that were true. But yeah, so you had your had a little time up in Philadelphia this past week. You got to see how the other half live with all our, our terrible weather here. So I'm sure you're glad to be back in Florida. I really don't miss that wintry mix. You know, it's just a, such a bad thing, <laughs> that wintry mix. Oh, wintry, it horrible. is the worst. It's not rain, it's not snow, it's just terrible. But uh, It's awful, yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> you've got your jacuzzi, you've got your pool, you've got your lanai, you're, you're in good shape now. So, Bob, I'm not worried about you. And we've got a big boom and bull market, buddy. And a big boom and bull market and a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. Uh, we're going to talk this morning about critical questions that we're not asking about retirement but should be. We're going to talk about those required minimum distributions. Retirement plans are a ticking tax time bomb when you turn 70 and a half. Bob and I are going to discuss potential strategies to help you reduce that tax burden in retirement along with this week's financial propaganda where we call out the worst advice the financial media has recently been broadcasting. And we have our spotlight segment today. We have our financial advisor, Jen Angel, on the program. She's going to talk about someone's real retirement plan and break down some of the things she did to help that couple out. So we've got a great show. Let's get to it. So, Bob, most of us have a lot of the same questions about our retirement. But what we find is there's a lot of other questions we're just not asking but really should be. For example, how much are my tax-deferred savings going to cost me in taxes? Well, Ryan, I know one thing for sure. There's only two certainties in life. Death and taxes, Bob. Death and taxes, yep. And the government's going to get their taxes on your tax-deferred savings, but it's really up to you, steps that you can take you know, to try and reduce that because your, your income in retirement is based on what we call combined income. So where would that come from, right? Well, I mean, first off, ideally you have Social Security. You've decided to take yep. it at the right time, which there's strategies around that. Secondly, maybe you have a pension, but most of us don't have a pension anymore. I know you have one, Bob. And after that, it's just looking at your portfolio and figuring out how you're going to generate income from that portfolio and what are the best accounts to actually pull from. Oh, well, that's a great news, right? Because different parts of your portfolio are treated differently by the IRS and you can manage you know, how much tax you're going to pay not just you know while you're retired, but even pre-retirement. Yeah, no, exactly right. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in the show. But with your, your IRAs and retirement accounts, there's a lot of planning you can do about how to draw that money out. But also, Bob, if you're going to generate income on your portfolio, it's best to do it with the most tax advantages in place. You know, For example, if you get one of those annuity where you, have, you get that guaranteed income stream for life, which sounds fantastic, the problem is all of that money is taxed at a disadvantaged tax rate, ordinary income rates. So you could buy a portfolio of high quality, institutionally priced municipal bonds and get tax free income. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying, Bob, That's is better? yes. Yes, what I'm saying is you could build a portfolio of tax free income where the government does not have their hand in there. Or you can have income that's generated that Uncle Sam's going to take a big portion of it. I think it's better to get money that's not taxed by the government, personally. You know, Ryan, I've been a big fan of the show, and I'm starting to realize that you're not a big <laughs> fan of annuities. Well, I, mean, I would never say I'm not, not a big – well, okay, I'm not a big fan, but it, you know, in some cases they can be appropriate. But a lot of times, again, they can be very disadvantaged, especially because of the tax situation. Well, you know, I read an article this week. There's a lot of people just like you – and the reason, the number one reason they will never buy an annuity is because they say they're not fair. What do you mean by that, Bob? How aren't they fair? They say, well, when you pass away, they keep the rest of your money. He said, that's not fair. It's my family's money. Yeah, that's, that's a bad deal. I can sum that up, Bob, in one sentence. The insurance company wins, not you. <laughs> yeah, they sure do. They sure do. So, right, you know, I mean, you have to withdraw money from your portfolio. 
And the only reason to consider annuity is because what is the greatest fear everyone has in retirement? That I'm going to outlive my money, and at the end of the day, you don't want to outlive your money. No. So how much can you safely take out of your portfolio and not have that worst-case scenario? Well, I think that's where the retirement planning comes in, because once you start to figure out what you're getting in Social Security pensions, then it comes down to what kind of income can I generate on my portfolio, and what can I, you know, let's say, safely draw from my portfolio on an annual basis. And if you stay within those confines, you shouldn't run out of money, you know, which is, again, the biggest fear that you have. Well, you know, over the last 45 years, my industry said the rule of thumb is you can take out 4% safely. Is that uh, rule of thumb apply in, in your opinion? I think it's a dangerous thing to do. We've heard that, you know, rule of thumbs, you know, I don't like rule of thumbs because let's face it, if you're drawing money from your savings account where you pay taxes on it, that's a lot cheaper than if you're going to take money from your retirement plan where you have to pay taxes on it, which is a lot more expensive. So, you know, depending on what accounts you're drawing from, depending on what other incomes you have coming in, you can't really just say I'm going to pull 4% from my portfolio. You know, that really has to be customized based on all the other variables in place with your own portfolio. So I wouldn't use that rule of thumb. you got to do your own personal plan to figure out where to draw from first. Well, I've heard you say it many times, Roy, rules of thumb are for the dumb. So if you want to be smart, <laughs> you got to customize your strategy. I didn't know you were so good at rhyming, Bob. You're in the wrong yeah, I'm, career. I'm, I'm, I'm releasing my rap album pretty soon, Roy, so stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> I think stick with your day job personally, but hey. Yeah, I think I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to thwart your dreams. Another thing, you know, since you're talking about insurance that you want to ask in retirement is a lot of times we have these insurance plans where we build up cash value in them. They still have a death benefit. We may not need the death benefit anymore because we're already retired and we already have enough savings. So the question is, do I keep that insurance in place do I, do I take out the cash value and use it to live on, to invest? You know, a lot of times it makes sense, Bob, to get rid of some of those old insurance policies. You know, Ry, they're all good points. And, and let's face it, life insurance is a necessary evil. But let me be real clear about life insurance. Right. It's necessary. It's evil. <laughs> and it's a bad <laughs> investment. <laughs> Right. It is a bad investment. It, and to your point, though, in some cases it is a need, but you really want to have that reviewed because a lot of times you may have this cash value in a policy and those insurance costs can be very high that it's eating away at that cash value that that death benefit may just go away. Whereas if you cash in the policy, just take that money, grow it and invest it. That could be money for your heirs that you'll have that'll be above and beyond whatever death benefit they're promising. But these are all numbers you have to run. You know, Ry, you're so right. You know, when you look at your life insurance cash value, it's no different than the cash value in your IRA, your portfolio. You have to look at it in a way that, uh, you know, insurance companies can't invest their money any better than you can, except they do invest in the same things you own, only they charge a hefty fee for that death benefit. Yes, exactly right. So it's like cut out the middleman, invest the same things the insurance company does. It's going to be a lot more money in your pocket at the end of the day, potentially. So if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to figure this out. I need a game plan for how do I draw from my portfolio. I want to do it with the least amount of taxes. I want my insurance policies reviewed. I want to make sure that everything's in place. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 safe for retirement. Bob and I will run for you our famous Total Financial Master Plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full, holistic review that looks at everything. All you need to do is print those statements off, put them in a folder, put them in a brown paper bag, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that information. We're going to load it into your own personalized financial portal where we're going to get a bird's eye view of everything, and we're going to start to look at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in those annuities, insurance products, mutual funds, brokerage products. Bob and I are going to show you where all the high costs are in your portfolio and show you how to reduce it. We're going to look at income. How are you going to replace your income in retirement? We're going to look at what that income gap is, and we're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio with the most tax advantages. And we're going to look at diversification. You need to protect yourself in retirement. Did you get hit really hard back in December when the market corrected? How do you protect yourself in the future? How do you bulletproof your portfolio for retirement? Bob and I are going to show you how to do that. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. And all you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next 10 callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. 
My son and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. Of course, there will be no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Rye Payne, and we're the pains of no pain, no gain, financial radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, the Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management. And the stock market continued its winning ways, posting its eighth consecutive weekly gain in spite of retail sales dropping 1.2% in December, the largest drop since September of 2009, sparking fears once again of a looming recession. Now, the market ignored these fears and focused on the optimism over progress between China and the U.S. as trade negotiators wrapped up their latest round of talks on Friday, citing measured progress towards a memorandum of understanding. This could serve as a framework for a deal between President Trump and Chinese leader Xi Jinping. They are trying to reach a deal by the March deadline, and President Trump is considering pushing it back 60 days to give negotiators more time to strike a deal. On the economic front, earnings season still in full swing, and fourth quarter earnings reports continue to be decent, with 66% of reporting companies beating their estimates, and 60% of reported better revenue estimates. Meanwhile, sentiment is very bullish, with most investors underinvested in stocks, not trusting the most recent rally, claiming it's too strong, it's too fast, and nothing more than a bear market rally. Of course, they seem to fail to realize we've been in a big booming bull market since 2009. And in fact, since 1940, no bear market rally has shared the signs of strength exhibited by our advance over the past eight weeks. Rather, these signs of strength have been seen only in the early phases of a major market rally like we experienced in 1982, 2009, and way back in 1987. You see, bull market declines come and go fast, and you don't want to miss the gains that follow in a big, booming bull market. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio that's appropriate to my risk tolerance? Do I have a portfolio that's appropriate to the big gains that are experiencing the current market? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? Give us a call or simply text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know that it can cost more than 280 grand to run a hot dog stand per year in Central Park? Speaking of hot dogs, keep listening to No Pain, No Gain and make your retirement plan a wiener. Oh, uh, gosh, I'm sorry. Uh, I meant to say a winner. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure that you are up to speed on everything financially speaking. And that's why we give you common sense advice. And that's why we put together our latest guide, Highlights from the New Tax Law, just to get you up to date with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. The Highlights from the New Tax Law just to get you up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. So, Bob, we are taught to save as much money in our retirement plans as we possibly can while we're working, You know, whether you have a 401k, a 403b, or just an IRA. The problem is when we turn 70 and a half, the government requires us to start withdrawing money from our retirement accounts. And last time I looked, we've got to start paying taxes on that money at that time, creating what we call the proverbial ticking tax time bomb. Yeah, you believe that, right? The IRS wants to get paid. Now, the <laughs> IRS makes you take money out of your retirement accounts, but how do they determine how much you need to take? Well, I believe it's based on an actuarial table, given your age. So each year, you take all the amount that you have in your retirement accounts and you divide it by the divisible number that they give you, and that goes down each year, which means you have to take more money out for every year past 70 and a half. Well, the IRS has a life expectancy factor, right, that they calculate on your life, 
And I think the good news is at age 70, they assume you're going to live 27.4 years. Even though most people don't make it past 80, they think you're going to make it to 97. That's good news. That is good news. <laughs> it's very, very promising. But the bad news is you still got to take money out of your retirement account and pay taxes. But if you take the value of your portfolio and divide it by that 27.4 number, it works out to close to 4%. So about 4% of your portfolio a year has to be withdrawn, and you got to pay tax on that as if it's ordinary income. Yeah, so the, the problem with the math is the more money you have in retirement accounts, the bigger amounts you're going to have to take starting at 70 and a half, and the more money you have to take out means the more taxes you have to pay, and a lot of times it's going to bump you up to a higher tax bracket depending on how much you actually have to pull from those accounts on an annual basis. The bad news is you've got to pay the tax. The good news is you can actually manage it and reduce the tax you know, by controlling your own behavior. That's right. And this is where a lot of proactive planning can take place. So right now, if you're, you know, I'd say, Bob, even if you're in your late 50s and you're looking to retire in the next couple of years, or if you're retired right now, but you're not 70 and a half, a lot of times with the right tax planning, it may make sense to withdraw from those accounts early. And there's a lot of strategies around that that can really lessen the tax burden later. Yeah, sure. I mean, how about doing a, a Roth conversion, right? Isn't that a good strategy? Yeah, so one that we use a lot, and this could be applicable to you, especially if you're, you're gonna, you know you're going to stop working before 70 and a half. You may go mm -hmm. through a period of what we call you're in a very low income bracket. If you start taking money out of your IRA at that lower bracket, instead of just putting in your savings account where you're going to pay taxes on all the growth, you can actually put it into what we call, Bob, a, or convert it into a Roth IRA where all the growth now is completely tax-free, not only over your life, but your heir's life as well, which can be a tremendous tax savings you know, for your family. Brilliant strategy, right? It's a good example of when less is more. Less tax for the IRS, more for you and your family. But what if you have you know, someone who doesn't need any income, you know, and you have to take out the RMD. Is there anything you would suggest to do with that money other than just take it out and pay tax? Well, one of the newer rules with the new tax reform is if you take that money and send it right to a charity, uh, especially if you're charitably inclined, right, it comes right off the top of your income, doesn't get factored into that RMD, which completely saves you the tax on that amount of money. Oh, that's fabulous. So you just uh, have to draw the money out and send it right to the charity and, and you never have to declare the income. Correct documentation, of course, needs to be uh, put in place and you need to talk to your tax advisor. But again, that's a very, very creative strategy that you can utilize, especially right now if you're already giving to charity. That's an excellent way to, to save yourself a lot more in taxes than you normally would. Now, right, a common mistake that I see people make with their required minimum distribution is they distribute the wrong money or they sell the wrong part of their portfolio. Now, when you have a garden, what's the best fruit to pick? The fruit that's ripe or the fruit that hasn't even grown yet? <laughs> well, I don't know much about gardening, Bob, but I'm going to guess. <laughs> it's the, few, the fruit that's ripe is the best stuff to pull from your, uh, your garden, not the stuff that needs to keep growing, per se, or needs more time to grow. Yeah, I think the big misunderstanding is you think you have to sell what's in your portfolio and distribute cash. You can do what's called in-kind. What's an in-kind distribution, right? Well, let's just say I have a security that I'm holding in my retirement account, Bob. Instead of selling it, putting that money in cash and then taking it out, you can move the security from one account to the other so it doesn't disrupt the way your portfolio is actually invested, but you still take the distribution you're required to by the government. Yeah, so you avoid market timing, you avoid missing out on a move, you uh, eliminate commissions. You know, Ry, I have clients that I've been taking out money and doing their required minimum distribution for 10 years because we've harvested what's going up the most. That portfolio value is the same today as it was 10 years ago in spite of all the withdrawals. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm brilliant, Bob. Brilliant, by the way. <laughs> but, you know, point <laughs> is, these are, these are a lot of great strategies that you want to start thinking about. And again, you want to start thinking about it before 70 and a half because there are a lot of things you can do strategically. And there are you know, just a couple of the ideas. The other thing, Bob, we talked about this on the last segment, too, is just you got to start drawing from your portfolio at some point to replace your income while you're working. And that's where the question becomes, you know, do you start drawing from those IRAs early or maybe you don't because let's face it, the money in your regular taxable accounts are going to be a lot cheaper or it might be a combination of both because you want to limit some of the tax you're going to pay on that money at 70 and a half. So the point is there's so many different options, Bob. You just need a plan in place to execute and it can save you a lot of money in taxes and make your portfolio a lot more efficient. And if you're thinking to yourself, hey, my head is spinning right now. Uh, all these acronyms, RMD and CSD, I mean, I need to 
I need to be financially savvy. I need to know what I own in my portfolio and what's appropriate and what needs to be distributed. I need to know what the costs are involved in my current portfolio. I want to be in a position to succeed. Well, here's your opportunity. If you're one of our next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own renowned total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but it's a full holistic review where we look at everything. You know what? It's the only financial review you'll ever need. We need you to gather all your statements, stick them in a folder, stick them in a shopping bag. You don't even have to open up the envelopes. We're going to sit down and review everything with you and build your own personalized 360 financial portal that will allow you to review everything in real time and help you to become financially organized. You'll be able to review your complete financial life anytime you feel like dropping in and looking at it. And more importantly, we're going to have you articulate all your goals and then present to you on a daily basis how you're progressing toward those goals on your own homepage. See, if you are one of our next few callers, we're going to take all that information and break down your portfolio and see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. We want to see if you're truly diversified across asset classes and within asset classes. We want to look at your cost. I don't know about you, but I really despise being overcharged, and I certainly don't want to be overcharged by my own portfolio. And lastly, income. We all need to fill that gap in income while we're retired or before we actually retire. We want to be certain that we have a repeatable, dependable income stream that will allow us not only to retire, but to stay retired. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan where we'll answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years? I tried for four decades. My family's been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success that only a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 safe for retirement and you're one of the next 10 callers, call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain, financial radio. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering you obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what did you find out there this week in the horrid world of financial propaganda? You know, Ryan, the media never, ever lets us down. All they do is publish articles about how not to be an investor. And this headline just (laughs) grabbed my attention and said, kicking yourself for missing the recent rally? Well, here's five reasons why you shouldn't. (laughs) So they're basically saying the markets had this magnificent rally, almost seven, eight weeks now since the bottom of the market in December. And what they're saying is it's okay that you missed that, which is like a 15% move up, by the way. The market's going to 15%. And why are they saying it's good that we missed that 15% move? I'd like to get a 15% return on my money, Bob. Well, what I love about it, Rise, first of all, it goes on to explain that if you miss the best couple of days of any year in any cycle, you generally miss the whole return, right? So they're telling you that, you know, you probably have just missed out on all the return you're going to make for the year by sitting on the sidelines. And then it goes on to tell people that, you know what, you're not really wrong just because you've been sitting in cash because you missed the big drop in December. Well, I doubt very seriously people just got out in November and been sitting in cash since then. Again, I'm telling you, don't be an investor. Sit on the sidelines and don't be fooled because, you know, there's so much bad news out there. Yeah, right, right. And then, you know, meanwhile, if the market keeps going higher, you're going to keep missing the boat. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. When do you get back in? (laughs) They're telling you, well, you know, the reason you missed out because you're on the sidelines for a good reason. Well, I'm trying to think, right, what would be some of the good reasons to be on the sidelines? Uh, you don't right. want to make any money. You don't want to retire comfortably. <laughs> you don't want to educate your children. You don't want to give money to charity. 
Um, <laughs> it's just, I was going to say, there's never a good reason not to be invested on a disciplined investment strategy based on your goals, the great goals of life. Well, I think it's important to remember too a couple of things here. Like you're saying, okay, you're sitting in cash, you're not in the market, you're earning two percent on your money. And even though 2% is higher than what we've received on our money markets and savings in a long time, it still allows the return, Bob, because we talk about this a lot, but that 2%, you have to pay taxes on it. So now maybe it's more like 1.5%. And we know that inflation has been going up by over 2% a year. So cost of living is going up by 2%. Your money's going up by 1.5%. You're losing money against inflation. And the other big thing is, and we talk about this a lot as well, is being in and out of the market misses the point because almost half your return from being in the stock market isn't about the market going up or when the market's going down. It's about the dividends that pay out quarter after quarter, and that's real cash flow that you can reinvest or you can live on. Well, Rod, basically this article says, hey, congratulations. You're a terrible investor, and so are we, and that's why we wrote this article so you can join the club. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I found another article this week that's kind of in the same vein. Uh, The headline Mm. was, A lot of negative surprises will hit the markets in the coming months, says a hedge fund veteran. (laughs) A lot of negative surprises, huh? A lot of negative, yeah, exactly. And his thesis is, Wall Street is in a bear market rally. Each bounce is higher, but the end of the trip's a bad place. Oof. Well, we had some real negative news lately. 300,000 new jobs were created last month, right? That's, is that a negative surprise? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we have the best employment numbers. More people are employed than they've ever been before since the 1960s, Bob. One of the tightest labor markets in history. Is that a bad thing? Well, it, that was a surprise, right? But again, positive surprise. I mean, why are the surprises in the last eight, nine years been positive? Because the economy is doing well. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> People just don't yeah, believe these, it. These, uh, these financial propagandists always like to be negative. They think it makes them sound smarter. They think they are smarter. But again, they never apologize for being dead wrong. No, it's almost like uh, the shortest memory in the world, right? It's like to be a great quarterback, you have to have a short memory. To be a pundit in the financial world, you have to have a short memory because you're usually wrong about your recommendations. But you got to keep coming out with new recommendations with the same conviction. So you got to forget how bad your other convictions were in the past. You know, um, when, you, when you sit there from a negative perspective, Rye, it's a really hard to be a smart investor. When you sit there from a perspective of abundance, when you look at you know, what you need to achieve with your portfolio and you educate yourself about the history of the markets, what happens is half the return comes from dividends and interest anyway. So you're getting paid to wait to see how things work out. And two thirds of the time, they work out to the upside. It brings up another good point because what we've seen is the market's up about seven, eight weeks now. But the outflows from U.S. equity funds has been going on for 11 weeks. So what that means is most investors right now, as the market's going up, are selling out or they're bailing out. And you know, we talk about this. It's a very dangerous thing to do if you haven't gotten that point so far. And this is why it's so critical to make your decisions based on what your goals are, what we call goal-based investing, as opposed to what's happening right now in the, in the media or what people are feeling right now. And I'm hearing this a lot from clients, too. It's like, well, we've had this huge rally. The market definitely has to go down from here. The reality of it is it doesn't, Bob. Like we were just talking about, the economic data is great. The dividends that you're actually earning on your portfolio right now are historically very good. And compared to what you're getting in cash right now or what you can get on a bond right now, you know, you're know you getting an excellent amount of cash flow as well. So you've really got to build that portfolio based on your plan. Just because the market's rallied here since the bottom doesn't necessarily mean it has to go down. If anything, it could go up a lot higher here, and that's why you have to stay invested at all costs here. Yeah, I agree, right? And valuations are good, but more importantly, sentiment is negative. I mean, most people are cautious or skeptical about this market. And let's face it, no bull markets ever ended when everybody's skeptical and underinvested. It's when they become euphoric and get fully invested is when you need to worry. So I like it when people are negative. I like it when these financial propaganda articles come out telling people not to invest because it's more for the people like us and our clients that are invested. Ironically, it's a very optimistic sign. Um, If you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a plan that's based on my goals. I need to make sure that I'm fully invested for the long term 
not based on the whims of what everybody's thinking right now. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 safe for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our famous total financial master plan. We're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review when we look at the big picture for you financially speaking. All you need to do is get those statements, put them together, put them in a folder, print them off the computer, whatever's easiest for you. Bring them in the office. We're going to build you your own personalized financial portal where we can get a bird's eye view of the whole picture and make real decisions about what you need to be doing. And that's everything from looking at all the critical components. We're going to look at income. You've got to replace your income in retirement. Where is it going to come from? Social Security. How are you going to draw it from your portfolio? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio with the most tax advantages. We're going to look at fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in investment portfolios. I know that's shocking. We're going to show you where all the highest costs are in your portfolio on those insurance products, annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products. We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so it's more money in your pocket for retirement. And we're going to look at diversification. Did you get hit hard when the market sold off at the end of the year? Have you protected your portfolio? Did you go to cash? We're going to show you how to bulletproof or safeguard your portfolio so it's protected in retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Don't miss out. It's time to get financially organized. If you're one of our next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for retirement, our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you text or call 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with my son, Rye, and we're the pains of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone. Gird your loins. Let's find out. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I, we're simple men. So obviously, we want to keep it simple for you. That's why we give you the most common sense, practical advice you can use with your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide, Highlights from the New Tax Law, just to get you up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555-888. Highlights from the new tax law just to get you up to speed. Know what's going on with the new tax reform. Taxes are around the corner. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. And you can catch Bob and I. If you want to learn more about Bob and I, you want to see if Bob's hair is real, it is. Simply go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. You can actually subscribe to the show there. You can get access to all our old shows there. And you can catch myself, other financial advisors of Payne Capital Management every week on all the different media outlets out there, everywhere from CNBC, Fox Business News, Yahoo Finance, where he give us our latest thoughts on the market. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at BeBullish.com. That's questions at BeBullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And to help with questions today, we have our producer, Mr. Mark Haywood. What's happening, brother? Doing well, gentlemen. And I'm going to offer a pro tip for all our listeners out there. Pro tip? A pro right. tip. It's free. And this is my free advice to you. If you're sitting there this year and you're frustrated because it was impossible to get a reservation on Valentine's Day, Go out the day before Valentine's Day. We fell into this this year. My wife and I were busy on Thursday night. And so we said, you know what? We're going to have to go out a little earlier in the week. Smooth sailing, no crowds, had the best time. And we didn't have to mess with the uh, turmoil on Valentine's Day. That's my free advice to you right there. As long as your lady was not disappointed, it wasn't the actual date. I think uh, that's a winner. Well, and the trick is to go out before, not after. Because then it's like... 
oh, I'm going to take you out the day after when everything's half price and there's no crowd. <laughs> that doesn't go over as well. That do, don't do that. I did not tell you to do that. Psychologically, well, we are a financial it a show, difference. Mark. We should show people how to save money. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Bargain shopping is great. Wouldn't try it with your wife. That's the one place yeah. where it's okay to... Uh, Save money on Valentine's Day, but you lose it all in the divorce. So let's move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Well, yeah, we, we digress here quickly. Let's take a question from Buddy on Lloyd's Neck, Long Island. He says, Bob, I'm quite ready to retire, but I won't be old enough for Medicare for another six months. Should I just stick it out until then? You know, Buddy, not only should you stick it out because you'll save money on health insurance, but you should stick it out because there's a lot of advantages to working a little longer than you thought you would. You know, Rye, what are some of those savings? Well, the big thing, obviously, is those health care costs, if you have to fund them on your own, are going to be extremely high. So for six months, it's probably worth, you know, whatever premiums you have to pay to cover yourself and your spouse if you're married, you know, which, again, you know, it's only six months, not that long before you're going to be on the government's plan, which you are now, Bob, on the government's plan, I believe. Yeah, I am. That's uh, absolutely am. And, uh, you know, the other thing to think about, buddy, is that that six months of premiums you're not paying because you're still on your company's plan. But it's also six months that you're not taking money out of your portfolio to live on. It's six months of Social Security benefit you're not spending. So there's a lot of advantages to working a little longer than you think because, you know, we're all living longer and health care costs are going through the roof. The estimates now that we're going to have $250,000 in medical costs in retirement. Right. That's an incredible number. Yeah, I mean, think about that chunk coming out of your portfolio. You know, what does that do to your your lifestyle? Does that affect your lifestyle? And that's why everything around medical planning has to be so critical. Because, Bob, now you're on the government's plan, but I know you also have what we call Medigap plan, which, you know, that's also costing you, you know, how much on a monthly basis? It's a lot. And it's uh, it's something, buddy, that you, if you, the longer you can postpone it, the better, because you'll have less money out of pocket, more money in your pocket, more money saved, less cost and then more money to compound to keep you in the lifestyle you, you are accustomed to. Well, thanks for writing in, buddy. Let's take another question now from Ruth out in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. Ruth says, Ryan, there's no way I'm going to spend through my savings during my life. Well, that's good, Ruth. So I'll end up leaving a lot of money to my kids, but they'll probably be in their 40s or 50s when that happens. I feel like they could use the money more now while they're in their 20s and 30s to help with things like student loan payoffs and home purchases. Should I start giving money away to them now? Yes, Ruth, definitely. The only caveat I put there is... Hopefully, you've run the retirement projections. You've made sure based on all your needs in retirement what they're going to be. And to Bob's point, you know, I would even factor in things like what if you had to spend a quarter of a million dollars in medical costs? Is that going to affect your retirement? If it's not, then, you know, gifting is a great way to start getting money out of your estate, Bob. I know for our clients, we recommend it all the time. You can do 15000 per person. So if you're married, that could be 30000 to each one of your kids and grandkids. Yeah, right. It's not only just uh, helping them out with, you know, making a down payment on their home or paying off loans. It's also funding 529 plans, which is the greatest way to save money for education. You know, how do they work, right? Yeah, they're an amazing way to do it. Uh, So basically, money you put into a 529 plan for your kids or maybe your grandkids at this point, like a Roth IRA, which we talked about earlier in the show, the money grows tax-free, but then you can take all that growth out to pay for college expenses tax-free, which makes it an amazing vehicle. And if you're really trying to get money out of your estate, Bob, you can front-load a gift. So that 30000 that you can do to any individual in one year, you could actually do five years up front, which is 150000 if you're aggressively trying to get money out of your estate, can be a very powerful tool. And you can use that to pay for uh, grade school, high school, college, anything that has a tuition, correct? That's right. Now, maybe it's for a grade school or a private school. There's limits on how much you can use each year, but that's actually part of the new tax reform. Some of the money can now be used for primary education, not just for higher education per se. So there's a lot more flexibility there, and it can be a great, great planning tool, especially if you're trying to get money out of your estate. You know, and Ruth can help her children and grandchildren become better investors because you can help them to, in their 20s, for example, if their children are in their 20s, to help them max out the contribution to their 401k or 403b because, you know, most people don't have enough money after tax savings, you know, to fund those accounts. And and the earlier you start, the wealthier you're going to be. Yeah, there's just so many different options and things you can do, not only to to help the next 
generation or your heirs, but also get money out of your estate. All right, that's great, Rod. So don't get any ideas. You know, well, I think Ruth should be gifting money. I don't necessarily mean that it applies to everybody. But uh, <laughs> hey, listen, I have a think question it, for you. On a scale of one to ten, how financially organized do you think Buddy and Ruth are? Oh boy, I'm gonna say, man, a two today, Bob. I'm not feeling benevolent. Oh, ooh, that's harsh, Rye. So let me ask all of you a question. On a scale of one to ten, how financially organized are you right now? How financially organized would you like to be? Of course you'd like to be at 10. And all you have to do is be one of our next few callers and have saved at least 200000 for retirement because Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. We'll create a 360 financial portal, a complete holistic view of everything you own, your entire net worth, including your portfolio. In addition, we'll display all your goals in a daily basis and give you a report card on how you're tracking towards those goals and how long it will take to achieve those goals. All you have to do is be one of our next few callers and gather all of your statements and put them in a shopping bag, put them in a folder. You know, you don't even have to have them in order. We'll take all that information and we'll break it down for you and analyze your portfolio to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Diversification, cost, and income. You need to be diversified. You need to have a strategy that will bulletproof your portfolio from the inherent volatility of the markets and give you the highest probability of achieving your goals. Cost. I don't know about you. I really despise being overcharged, and I certainly don't want to be overcharged on my investments. Our spreadsheet will break down every cost, every hidden charge, and let you know exactly what it costs you to get your return that you achieved over the last 10, 20, and 30 years. Income. You know, we need to fill that gap in retirement. You know, last I checked, once you retire, your company stops sending you a paycheck. You need to create your own paycheck. You need a lifetime of income you can't outlive. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, which will answer that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B to your goals with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as only a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844 844- 752-6692. We have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 safe for retirement, give us a call or text us now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Hi, it's Ryan and Bob here, and we want to talk to you about your cash. Bob, many of us are sitting on a lot of cash right now in our businesses and personal savings accounts, and rest assured the banks are taking full advantage of our dormant cash. That's right, Ryan. Not only do you have to worry about FDIC insurance limits, but most savings accounts pay close to 0%. Exactly right, and that's why we're putting together short-term CD ladders so you can have increased FDIC coverage, and not to mention rates that are in many cases double what your local savings and local checking accounts are paying. If you want to learn more about how to manage your cash better, simply text the word CASH, that's C-A-S-H, CASH, to 844-752-6692. That's text the word CASH, C-A-S-H, to 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I want to make sure you have the most common sense advice with your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide, highlights from the new tax law, just to get you up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. Highlights from the new tax law. Get up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. And now we have a very special guest on our show, my colleague, Bob's colleague, 
Certified Financial Analyst Level 2. Woo! Jen Financial Angel. How you doing, Jen? Hey, I'm good. How are you guys? Good, 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 good. Couldn't be better. Say, couldn't be better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still riding the high from the Super Bowl, so, you know, I'm good. Oh, <laughs> that's right, awesome. Let's move on to the case now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Enough of that. that <laughs> so heated, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have to say, Jen is fully recovered. She was actually at the Super Bowl. I was. Uh, Took about a week and a half, but I am back. <laughs> now back into a normal state. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for being on the show this morning, Jen. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, good to be here. And you worked on a case recently for a woman. She looks like she's getting ready to retire, mm-hmm. and uh, you helped her out with her planning, and I thought you could give us the rundown today and just talk about how you helped this specific person just get on track with their finances. That's what our spotlight segment's all about. So I'll give the floor to you. All right. Yes. So like you mentioned, I met with this woman who actually did retire for about two years and decided she was super bored and went back to work. She's in her late 50s, so she definitely has plenty of time to keep working if she so chooses. Yep. So she decided she's going back to work and really wanted an evaluation in her portfolio. She actually worked in finance most of her life. Okay. Um, so she had... You know, a good amount of knowledge, almost too much, probably. <laughs> we like to see as anyone who's in the fi- any of our listeners who are in the financial world, you know enough to be dangerous, which is a very bad place mm-hmm. to be. <laughs> yeah. So she knew, you know, the things that she was comfortable with, but there was definitely some nuances that we had to go through. She had no kids, so you know that's one way to grow your wealth: have no children. Bob can attest to that. And really, just didn't have, um, you know, uh, had never looked at her plan before. Had a broker at where she was previously, but not somebody who would ever, you know, give her actual advice or really look at her plan by any means. Was that the catalyst? I mean, what, what made her feel like, okay, I'm working with this old school broker per se, where she felt like, oh, you know, I need a second opinion. What was the, the thinking? What was the thinking there? I think the catalyst was when in December she lost $250,000 oh. in market value, and I think that was really the catalyst um, to be like, you know what, maybe I need some protection here, and she's not getting any advice either. So, you know, with potential, you know, another retirement around the corner for the next, like, few years, along with losing market value, you know, really wanted to just take a look at everything. So that was huge. Like yeah. the 250 in, in one month. That would wake me up. So, <laughs> so uh, what did you do to, to help get her on the path to what we call financial freedom or retirement? Yeah. So we took a look at everything, you know, put it into our, our spreadsheet and said, okay, you know, here's what you have in each category. Shocker, she was overweight in, you know, large cap US, basically the S&P, which felt a lot in December too. So that was a part of it. Yeah. And really wanted to, you know, she's over almost 30% in, in those two categories, which is just... A lot to have in one asset class, basically. Yeah, Yeah, we see this a lot. You know, to your point, Jen, when you have a lot of money in large cap U.S. companies, well, they did the best the last 10 years, so we may have put more money there than we should have. But when the market came down, those stocks got hit the hardest. What goes up must come down, right? Exactly. And she definitely felt that. So she called and was like, you know what? I think I need second opinion. And then as well as, you know, just taking the risk, she was in a lot of preferreds which are basically act like a stock more so than a, a, a traditional fixed income or bond instrument. Not to get too complicated, but basically those get hit really hard as well um, when you see the stock volatility. So well, like she got hit on both hard. ends. <laughs> I mean, it's a uh, Lehman preferred one to zero. You lost all your money. Exactly. Yeah. And just to, to clarify, so preferred stock is, is more like a bond than a stock where it's issued from something like Lehman Brothers or another company you get a set interest rate on it, but there's never really a maturity date. It's in perpetuity. So to your point, they can act like stocks and go down just like the market, which is not the point in owning a fixed, safe investment. Yeah. And so really the point, you know, we really wanted to drive home with her is, you know, you have no traditional fixed income investments. So you have these preferreds that kind of act like a fixed income, kind of act like a stock, but you really have no protection whatsoever in the event of a downturn. Even in December, you know, you lost, you know, a tenth of your overall net worth because, you know, you're, you're in these crazy instruments. Yeah. So that was a really big one is, you know, and I think she really understood, you know, I get that when I get closer to retirement, when I'm no longer working for sure, I want to be able to have some protection there. And that was a really big point to make as well. I mean, you get that stable income, you can get tax-free income. I mean, you know, the the bonds are just the best way to, you know, add some protection into the portfolio. You know, Jen, we see that a lot, right? Where people use bond alternatives 
thinking that they have all the safety of bonds, but they can get a little bit more in yield and not really recognize that the only true hedge in a portfolio is to have an investment that actually comes due. In other words, you have a guaranteed date where you get your money back. If interest rates start going up, when do preferreds come due? <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah, never, or, yeah. or maybe 50, 100 years from now. Right. A lot of yeah. perpetual. So there's a, you know, again, a lot of risk that people don't realize, don't recognize until they have a uh, certified financial angel take a look at it. <laughs> oh, thanks, Bob. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, that, that great job on this, Jen, and that's such a great point. And we talk about this on the show at Nauseam, you know, having an institutionally managed portfolio bonds, and we experienced it in December, that was the only thing that was up. And that's the only reason you really want to own bonds at the end of the day, to your point, Bob, as a hedge, is when the market's going down, you need something that's not going to go down with the market. And bond funds, preferred stocks, and these more exotic type of investments just don't do the job. You know, Rye, I'm looking at this case, and I'd say, Jen, this is another total financial masterpiece. Great job. Wonderful analysis. And uh, this client's definitely going to be on the path to financial independence. That's the goal, Bob. That's the goal. (laughs) Well done, Jen. If you're thinking to yourself, this is the kind of review I need. This is exactly what we'll do for you. If you're one of the next couple callers, we still have a couple slots left. You have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself, Bob, Jen, Certified Financial Angel, and at CFA Level 2. Uh, we'll take the time and run for you a total financial master plan just like this, and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review. Just bring in your statements, print them off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. What we're going to do is we're going to build you your own personalized financial portal, and we're going to look at all the critical components just like this. We're going to look at that diversification. How hard did you get hit in December? This woman lost $250,000. How do you bulletproof and protect your portfolio moving forward? We're going to show you how to do that. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. You need to replace that paycheck. How do you derive income from your portfolio? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio with the most tax advantages. And we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in these portfolios. A lot of those brokerage fees, annuities, mutual funds, life insurance products. We're going to show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together and determine the most critical question Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we have worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. We have a few spots left. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved over $200,000 for retirement. Our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. But, of course, there won't be a plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another great show. And, again, Jen, i just always honored to have uh, your presence here on the radio airwaves. You guys can't see this, but my eyes are rolling. So. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you, guys. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Jen. Big Bob, enjoy the uh, heat. Fire up the jacuzzi, man. The rest of the day is yours. Well, Ryan, I'm going to enjoy your day on Monday, President's Day. Since you're the president of Payne Capital Management, I'll be celebrating <laughs> you. You know that I, I always thought the holiday was about me. I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> no, son, everything's been about you for as long as I've known you. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> well, have a great weekend, President's Day weekend, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.